Greetings and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. On this episode, I am going to be showing you how to make this special fancy pendant thingy. It is using some right angle weave. We got some chain action going on and it's kind of fun. It looks like, I don't know, totem or glyph or an ancient type thing. Some people were saying alien technology or some stuff. So I was feeling a triangle bezel and that is what I came up with. So this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make the 18 millimeter size. And for our patrons and our members over on YouTube, I've just launched the memberships on the YouTube side. So if you check down the description and you want to join for exclusive tutorials, there is a join button in the description box below. And we will be learning how to do it with separate sizes to make an even fancier pendant. Kind of looks like a moon or a banana or even a vampire bat. So if you want to check that out, be sure to check the links in the description. So for this project, you will need an 18 millimeter Rivoli, 12 four millimeter bicones, or even more if you plan on accenting the dangly parts. If you want to accent the dangly parts, add six more. You will need three six millimeter bicones. You will need 38 two millimeter fire polish beads through two millimeters or the larger ones work as well you just need to do a little finagling to get them started you will also need four millimeter bugle beads or you can also use about four seed beads or three depending on how big your seed beads are if you use toho or miyuki or other brands you also need size 15 seed beads and size 11 seed beads. And of course, your needle and thread. I'm using 1G as well as, I'm using a size 13 needle. You don't have to, size 12 is good enough. I just broke all of my 12s, so I'm going to use a 13 instead. And with all that being said, let us get started. So I am going to actually start off by doing something I don't normally do. I'm going to condition my thread. I actually have formulated a new thread conditioner that I've been working on for several months and had my lovely community over on uh, Discord test it out. And I came up with something that I am very happy with. And I've started to sell these over on Etsy. So this is a vegan formula. That is great and adds a lot of slip and doesn't make little crusty bits all over your piece as opposed to beeswax and other things like that. So I just slide my thread right through that. So this entire bezel is essentially your right angle weave and we're making a triangle out of it. So first and foremost, I'm going to thread on a size 11, one of my bugle beads, a size 11, and a size 4 bicone. Thread that down, pass back everything once more, pull through and tie an overhand knot using my tail and my working thread. And we have started one unit of right angle weave. We're just using funky shapes, but it's the same exact steps. From here, I'm going to pass back through my bicone and add my next stage, which is a size 11, a bugle, that's what that is, a bugle bead and another size 11. We're going to pass back through the bicone. That's our next step. I like to reinforce to make things a little easier on myself so that things aren't pulling out where they're not supposed to be. The bezel will work either way, so feel free to do whatever you're comfortable with. Our next stage is a size 11, a bicone, and a size 11. Pass back through the bugle bead. Reinforce if necessary. And our last stitch for the row is a size 11, a bugle bead, a size 11. Pass back through the bicone and reinforce. 
And that is our finished row. All three of our sides are going to look like this. Bugle, bicone, bugle, bicone, bugle. Two bicones, three bugles. So, now we're going to use our transition, which is going to look like a size 11, a bugle, a size 11, a 6 millimeter, and a size 11. We're going to pass back through that bugle. Maybe. There we go. Pass back through the bugle. Pull tight. And I would definitely recommend reinforcing this because there's a lot of space that we are taking up with these giant beads. And what we want to do is end up coming out of the second bugle bead on the opposite side of the 6mm where we started from. From there, we're going to continue our pattern. So, this is going to be our first bugle bead, which is equal to this. So our next stitch is going to be one size 11, one bicone, one size 11. Pass back through the bugle bead and reinforce. And from there, continue on until you have two bicones and three bugle beads. All right, so from here, we're going to do another transition with our six millimeter. The order of the beads is just going to be a little different just because we had an odd number of right angle weave stitches. So it moves a little bit. So we're going to add on a size 11, a six millimeter, size 11, a bugle bead, and another size 11. Going to pass back up through the bugle bead and reinforce. Then once you've done that, Starting from here, you're going to do another set of bugle bead, 4mm bugle bead, 4mm bugle bead. Alright, so once you've done that, it's time to join everything together. So, this is like the last stitch of a right angle weave, so we have two of our beads already here. So, from here, I'm coming out of a bugle bead. I'm going to add one size 11 and pass through the opposite bugle bead. So it starts to form together like that. I'm going to add one size 11, one six millimeter, one size 11, and pass back through the bugle bead that we started from. Then reinforce, and we're ready to add the opposite side. After I've done reinforcing, I want to come up through the size 11 seed bead on the opposite end of the six millimeter bicone. I'm going to add one two millimeter bead and pass through the next size 11 bead on the bezel. Going to repeat that all the way down until you end up to the next bicone. So I have passed through the 6mm bicone. I'm going to add three size 15s, a size 11, a 2mm, a size 11, and three size 15s. We're going to pass back through the 6mm. Then we're going to pop the point in the center. So pass through the size 15s and the size 11. Skip over the 2 millimeter, pass through the size 11 and the three size 15s. Wrap that thread around to make sure the 2 millimeter pops up like that. Pass back through the 6 millimeter. Pick up the size 11, then you can begin adding on your two millimeters. So do that all the way around. Add two millimeters between the size 11s, wrap around the bicones twice to add your two millimeter point, and we'll be ready to work on the next phase. All right, and that's what we're looking at so far. So now we're gonna work on filling the inside of our bezel. This is kind of optional if you want to have more of the Rivoli showing out. You can kind of skip this step, but if you want something a little bit more universal, we can go and add our accents there. So from the six millimeter, I'm gonna pass down the size 11 next to it. Go down a bugle bead, and I'm going to pass through the size 11 that's in between the two bugle beads in the corner. 
So from there, I am going to pick up the next size 11. Add on one two millimeter. Go to the next seed bead. Add on another two millimeter. Go through the next seed bead. One more two millimeter, and this time we're going to end up picking up all three of these in the corner to kind of tighten it up. So I'm going to start by picking up the next two seed beads, then picking up the one next over. Then I'm going to add my three two millimeters, pick up the next corner, three two millimeters, pick up this corner. Then when I'm done with that, I want to end up coming out of the six millimeter bicone above. All right. So once you've done that, you're coming out of the six millimeter bicone. I'm going to add on one size 11 and we're going to work on peyote going through the two millimeter uh, fire polish beads. So we've got one there. Add on 11. Go through the next two millimeter, size 11, two millimeter, and be careful with your two millimeters because they tend to not like having needles shoved through them, and I've had problems where I've cracked these open. So be mindful of that, change to a smaller needle if you need one. Last two millimeter. Add one more size 11 and pass through the bicone. Size 11 through the next two millimeter and just repeat that all the way around. All right, so once we've done that, we are finally ready to sew on the back. So from the six millimeter bicone, I'm going to pick up the loose size 11 seed bead, not attached to it. I am going to add a bugle bead, a size 11, and a bugle bead. Then I'm going to jump across the 6mm and pass through the loose size 11 seed bead that is next to the thingy. It's loose. It's next to the bicone. You've added it. Yes. Then you're going to reinforce that. Then you're going to want to end up coming out of the bugle bead. Next over from the size 11 next to the 6 millimeter. Now all I'm going to add is a size 11 and a 4 millimeter bicone. Our next size 11. Then we're going to pass back through the next size 11 on the row. Go back up the bugle bead. Then we're going to end up coming out of the bicone. Now these bottom loose size 11s are basically going to act as our bottom row for the right angle weave strip that's going to be sitting on top. Now since we're at the bicone from the bottom, I'm going to first pick up the next size 11 seed bead, add on a bugle and another size 11, go down through the bicone, now we're coming upwards through the bugle bead, so I'm adding on a size 11 and a bicone. I am picking up the next size 11 seed bead, picking up the bugle, coming out from the bottom of the bicone, so I'm going to pick up the next loose bead, add on one bugle bead, then one size 11, pass back down through the bicone. Now we are at the last bugle bead before the six millimeter bead. And we already have one of the bugle beads that's gonna wrap around it. So first off, I'm going to add one size 11 and one bugle bead Then I'm gonna pass through jumping across the six millimeter. I'm going to pick up the loose size 11 bead there. I'm going to go through the six millimeter bead. I'm gonna pick up the last loose bead on that round next to the six millimeter and finally back up through no the bugle bead then we will reinforce that once and from here it's the same exact step from over here 
So you'll add your bicone set, bugle, bicone, bugle, and then wrap around the final six millimeter bead and continue on until you have your middle bugle bead because we're going to do something special with the last bicone in order to join everything together. After you have done your second strip, you're going to tuck in your rivoli like a pita pocket and then stitch up the last row. Now, if you want to make this reversible, you can use a Rivoli that is unfoiled, so it has a clear backing back and forth. And you can even use different colors of the bicones and the bugle beads uh, to make it look really different. It's all up to you. So anyway, finish off with your right angle weave going all the way around, around the bicone, just like we did here. And stop after the second bugle bead right here. Alright, so once you've gotten to that point... I am actually coming out through a size 11 seed bead after the bugle bead. Um, this may happen if you had to add threads and you accidentally switch the orientation. Um, so if these steps don't work out for you, feel free to reverse the order that you add the beads on. But right now, since my bugle is coming out there, I'm going to start by adding on my bicone, then my size 11. If my thread is coming above the bugle bead, then I'm going to add the size 11 first, and then the bicone. So I'm going to go ahead and pass back through the bicone. All right, so I am coming up through the bicone. If your orientation is opposite, and you're coming down through the bicone, you are going to pick up first the size 11, then the bugle bead, but for my orientation, I'm going to pick up the size 11, then pick up the bugle bead, and pick up the final size 11 seed bead, then reinforce that. Then once you've done that, you're going to cinch everything together like you did on the front side with your 2mm beads and collecting the corner beads, so you add your two millimeters here, three of them, collect the corner, three of them, collect the corner until you have cinched everything together. You're probably going to want to reinforce quite a bit to get everything tight if you have done some reinforcing before switching everything together. And you'll be done with the basic pendant, and we will add the embellishments next. All right, now we are ready for our embellishments. I am coming out of a 2mm B that is way on the corner above the 6mm bicone. I am going to add a size 15, a size 11, and a size 15. Pass back through the 2mm bead. Pop that point. So up through the 15, skipping the 11, back through the size 15, and the 2 millimeter bead. Going to go up through the 15 and through the 11 where I'm going to start my dangly parts to where I am going to add a non-descriptive number of size 15 seed beads, my dangly part, and three more size 15s. Now you can do a lot with these dangly parts. For example, I have added an indeterminate number of size 15 seed beads, I added a bugle bead, I added a 4mm bicone, I added, this is a top down or pair drilled by a drop bead, so I had to add three different beads on the bottom, then pass back up through everything. Now, I've got a video that uh, tells the difference between the top down and the top drilled, sorts of drop beads that'll give you an easier time to determine what kind of fringe you need. But for this type of drop, I'm just going to need to wrap around and over. So that's what these three extra size 15s are for. I am going to skip through the next three size 15s, go back up through the remaining size 15s, and finally through the size 11. 
that will conclude my fringy drop. Now, you can use only one drop, or if you want to add a second, what you're going to do is add on a size 15, pull down, then go back through the size 11 bead that is out of the corner hanging out with the 2mm bead. Pull that down, and that size 15 C bead is going to hold your place there, allowing you to add a second dangle. So, add your second dangle. You can make it shorter, you can make it longer, whatever suits your aesthetic. You will add your indiscriminate number of beads, add whatever dangly part you need necessary, travel back up. I'm just going to add a simple fringe here. So, I've got four beads. I'm going to skip one bead. Then go back up through three beads, back up through the size 11. From there, I'm going to travel through the size 15 that is connected to the 2 millimeter bead. And we're going to press on to our next step on our embellishment. I'm going to move down through... The size 15 seed beads, the 11 that's next to the 2 millimeter, and I'm going to move down through one of the size 11s that is attached to the 6 millimeter bicone, provided there isn't a knot blocking my way. I'm going to move all the way down to the center 2 millimeter on our bezel, or the third 1, 2, 3 out of the five. So coming out of that two millimeter bead, I'm gonna add on a size 15, a size 11, size 15, pass back through that same two millimeter bead. You can pop the point if you want, or not if you don't have to, um, if you don't want thread, extra thread where it doesn't need to be. So then, after we've done that and decided what we want to do here, we're going to move all the way back up through to this next 2 millimeter bead, which will be the downward point on our bezel to add on another dangly part, but it's the one that's going to act a little bit different. We're going to use this as leverage. So, from there, move all the way down to the bottom Two millimeter bead so coming down from that two millimeter bead we're going to do the same thing over here adding on a size 15 11 size 15 passing back through the two millimeter and we're going to pop that point passing through the 15 skipping the 11 going through the 15 passing back through the two millimeter then we're going to end up coming out of the size 11 seed bead. Going to add one dangly part on this side. I'm just going to add an indiscriminate number of beads. To this dangly part, I'm going to skip over my one, pass back through all of these beads, and then pick up the size 11 once more. To add one fringy bit, Add on another set of beads to add another fringy bit. Skip over whatever beads you need to to pass back up through everything. Go back down through the size 11. You can reinforce the threads if you're uncomfortable with the amount of fringe tension that's going to happen but the more thread you add onto it, the less dangly it's going to be. Um, if you're using a nylon, your threads will behave a bit better and a bit more dangly. But for example, I reinforced this once and it still has that curve from the thread tension. Uh, with nylon, it'll wear down eventually and it'll hang thread straight. But decide what you want to do with tension. So from that 11, we're going to go through the size 15. Back through the 2 millimeter. 
we're going to go down the 11 and the 315s, go through the size 11 next to the 6 millimeter, pass back through to the center 2 millimeter bead, do the same thing we did across the way with the 15, 11, 15, move back up to this last 2 millimeter. Then you're going to do the same thing you did on the opposite side where you added the bead to maintain the anchor point. And then finally, move to the center of this center 2 millimeter, and we'll add our bale. All right. So with in regards to the bale, there's a lot of options you can do with this. For me, I just added a ladder stitch around that bead and anchored it into two points, and I'll show you how to do that. You can also do herringbone anchored to that point. You can use right angle weave. You can even just add a string of beads and be done with it. So it's all up to you, but for now I'm going to show you how to do the ladder stitch. Coming out of the 2 millimeter bead in the center, I'm going to add on two seed beads. You can add 15s or 11s, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to pass back through that 2 millimeter bead around so that the beads sit on top of each other. Now, for more stability on the bale, you can reinforce this. It depends on how comfy you feel about the thread tension. You can always skip over till the end and see how everything feels and pass back through this set. So, I'm going to pass through those two beads again, add on two more size 11s, pass around, through, the size 11s previously so that they sit on top of each other like that. Um, you can decide to reinforce if you want or you can just simply pass back through the two size 11s, add on two more size 11s, pass back through Decide if you want to reinforce and keep on going until you have the length that you want, which for me, I use size 15, so around 12 to 14 stitches was good enough for me. For size 11s, you might be able to get away with two. It just depends on how big you want it and how uh, big your chain is going to be, how thick it is. So keep doing that until you feel comfy. All right, so this is good enough for me. All I'm going to do is, my thread is coming out of my left side. It could come out of your right side, depending on where you are in your chain. And I'm just going to pass through the right side of the 2 millimeter bead so that it folds over and forms a loop. Like that. And then from this side, you're going to pass through the right side of the size 11 chain and that will anchor your loop together. If you feel like you have enough room in your two millimeter, feel free to reinforce that. And if you feel like you have enough room, you can also pass through the seed beads or pass through the two millimeter bead again, pass through the back size 11 seed beads and down through there. From there, feel free to tie your thread. Now, the following steps are up to you if you want to do it. You take the size 11 seed bead that's in the center between fringe points and you find a jump ring that will fit inside that size 11 and slip it through. If you're having trouble finding something that will slip through that, you can also use a thin gauge wire and make your own wrapped link uh, or link of some kind. Or alternatively, you can sew your chain on instead of using jump rings. Now, how you want to do your chain is entirely up to you. I'll just show you what I did. Getting the fringe out of the way. I added jump rings on each corner of the pendant on the outside. Then I added to where those loops are in the center between the next corner. So both of these two have jump rings. This one has two jump rings, which I placed above the two millimeter and on top of the six millimeter set. 
it's entirely up to you where you want to put your jump rings. If you don't even want to put jump rings there, you can even skip putting the three uh, seed beads there. And then for the chain itself, I stuck about a two inch chain from the top to the center one, a longer one about two and a half to three inches from the center to the first loop on the bottom point and repeated on the other side. Then I decided it wasn't chainy enough, so I added two stripes of just plain dangling chains, about two inches, that are just free-falling there. And then I added another free-falling one length of chain on the two center pieces. And that is how I finished this piece. And I had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of ways you can customize it. You can add more chain, you can add less chain, you can connect chain all the way around over here. You can customize your dangly parts. I think this would even look cool with like stick or coral fringe or even leaf fringe would look cool with this. You can add things, you can take away things, you can make this reversible again by changing the colors here from the other side by using, you can either, some beads have a really cool, some or some of your holies have a really cool backing so that like this one has a nice one as opposed to the flat silver or flat gold that you might see um, or you can use an unfoiled so it shines through both ways your bales can change you can even turn this into a pin instead of a necklace pendant thingy this would be really fun as earrings so make another one if you'd like but yes that is what i have for you today I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you make this, join us on our Discord group to talk about it and show us pictures of what you've done. I would really, really love to see your color combinations, and we have a nice, lovely community over there who would also like to see what you have done with this tutorial. And just come out and hang out and get more beading tips, or just talk about general life and self and come join us, because socializing is great. And if you would like to take it one step further and learn how to do it in multiple sizes, maybe make a nice giant crescent pendant like this, come and join us over on Patreon or on YouTube memberships, patreon.com slash Odin's Musings, or click on the join button down below. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed and joined me on Patreon. Uh, you guys are really awesome and you help me keep this thing afloat. So thank you much to all of you for that. And if you'd like to check out my new thread self, there is a link down below to my Etsy shop. You can check it out at Odin's Bead Hall on Etsy, and you should be able to find it there. So thank you all so much for joining me. And of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.